God of heaven who really through his spirit draws us closer to himself will speak to us. Amen. Beloved, uh, we are called as children of God to live our lives in a certain way and to walk in the will of God. I know that in the seasons we are in, in the times we are in, there's so much going on in the world. And because of that, we are challenged so much that unfortunately, uh, it seems we tend to really drift away from what God really wants us to do. But it's dangerous in the sense that there's a day coming that we will give an account of our stewardship. We'll give an account of our walk with the Lord. And I believe that every Christian must not ever forget that this life that we live here, there's coming a day where we will account for everything we did and everything we do. Hallelujah. Not too long ago, probably maybe a week or two ago, I, when I spoke about uh, Jesus going to the cross, I remember I drew attention to the fact that that price he paid on the cross was very expensive. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, we were bought at a price, and therefore we have to honor God with our bodies. Now, chapter 7, verse 23 also says that we were bought at a price, and we do not become slaves to human beings. Beloved in the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5.15 says that, and I'm building something because of where I'm going. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Now, what am I trying to uh, get us to understand? Actually, Paul then said in, uh, about he himself in Galatians 2.20, he says that I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, hallelujah, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <laughs> I don't know if we understand these things. He says that I have been crucified <laughs> with Christ. Let's remember that we've established that he paid a price for our lives. So we don't own our lives any longer. And I said on that day that if someone, if you go to the store to buy something and you pay for it, it's no longer for the store owner but for you. So if Jesus paid a price for my life and for your life, it means that the life that I live doesn't belong to me any longer, but belongs to him. And that's where I want Christians to really understand. We have to come to that point that it's not about what I can do or what I do. It's about what he wants me to do. What he wants me to do. Because he owns me now. He paid a price for my life, and therefore, my life is in his hands. So, Paul says that he's been crucified with Christ, and therefore, Paul no longer lives. Amen. You know, we all know that God said that any time Adam and Eve ate the uh, uh, fruit, they will die. And indeed they died, but they lived. 
Amen. So we need to understand that if Paul says that I no longer live, it doesn't mean that physically Paul is dead. Paul is still alive. But he doesn't live for himself. Now his life belongs to the one who died for him. So he says that I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So if I have life, it's because of the Christ who is inside of me. And if he is in me, if you buy a car, and I want you to really understand this very well. I'm not trying to make Jesus look like the engine in your car, uh, or Holy Spirit looks like the engine in your car, but that's what it seems. Because it is the engine in your car that makes your engine move. True or false? So, you don't live for yourself, but you live for one who really now is in charge of your life and who rules your life and who controls your life. Hallelujah. Because many of us make statements that looks like we run our own lives. We rule our own lives. But that's wrong. Because this life as a Christian... <laughs> you don't live it by yourself. You submit to him and he really leads you on. Hallelujah. So he goes on to say, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why would he continue to say, crucified with Christ, gave himself for me, uh, paid the price for me, purchased me by his blood, and all that? It brings you an understanding that as a Christian, if you are not a Christian, that's a different thing altogether. But as long as you are a Christian, you did not become a Christian because you just became. You became a Christian because he gave you the power to be the child of God or the sons of God. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says in John 1.12. Because we don't become because we just felt we should become. We become because he made us so. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to do what? To become children of God. So to become a child of God, and that's why sometimes I have a challenge with people saying that, but we are all children of God. No, we are all not children of God. We are all creation of God. God created us. But to be a child of God, you need to be given the power or the right so you can become. And if someone gives you the power to become, then you begin to follow the one who gave you the power to become. You can't become and then still say that I am who I am. You are not who you are. You are who he makes you to be. Hallelujah. And we need to get that into our spirit. Hallelujah. So Jesus himself in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, I love that scripture. Because it's, it's, you see, when you come to Christ, it's what really defines how you live. If you want to really live for Christ, he says that, first of all, if you haven't denied yourself, you can't even say that you're a disciple of Christ. It's conditional. Then he said to them all, whoever wants, whoever desires, whoever seeks to be my disciple... Hallelujah. So it is not automatic that you are a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah. I said it is not what automatic that you are a disciple of Christ. If you want to be one, there are conditions. According to the Bible, not according to my theory. 
It is according to the Bible. Whoever, and this is Jesus speaking, whoever wants, desires, seek to be my disciple must. I said do what? Must deny themselves. Take up their cross daily. Not sometimes. Not monthly. Hallelujah. Some people are Christians in the morning and in the afternoon they are something else. No. Daily. Daily means what? Daily. Hallelujah. (laughs) Carry. Take up your cross. Cross is not fun to be carrying it daily. Cross is not interesting to be carrying it daily. But whether it is interesting or not, Jesus says that carry it daily. And go where you want to go. And do what? Follow me. Yeah, but you say this every day. I will stop saying until I see you following Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want me to stop saying it, then let's take it out of the Bible. Amen. There are scriptures I love to read them every day. I love to remind myself every day. One of them is Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. It's food. I eat it. I declare it every morning. I say it every morning. Hallelujah. But do what? Don't seek only the kingdom. Seek the righteousness in addition to it. Because in that kingdom, there is righteousness. There is holiness. Hallelujah. 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 For the rest of the things, he says that he will be, it will be given. Hallelujah. He didn't say I should seek that one. Until we understand this well. And even when you understand it, remind yourselves every day. It is good for us to remind ourselves. Because we tend to forget very easily. All of us, we tend to forget things. Amen. Amen. So, in order to remind yourself, go to it every day. Put it in your spirit every day. And remind yourself, this day, I have to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The rest of the things, he is my provider. He will provide them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are not for you. You are for him. I know you are nice. I know, yeah. But you are not for you. You are not for anyone. You are for who? Let no one tell you that you are for him or her. You are for Jesus. I said you are for who? So he says, you should deny yourself. You. Me. I should deny myself because I have to remind myself daily, regularly, moment by moment, that this life I live, I don't live for myself, I live for him. And if that is so, if I'm broke, I'm broke for him. If I have an abundance, I'm having abundance for him. Hallelujah. If I'm hungry, I'm hungry for him. If I walk, I walk with him. He did not say, even though I drive in the valleys of the shadow of death. What did he say? Even though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's for you to reflect on. Think about that. Amen. Beloved, 
I want you to really understand that some of the things that we've been focusing on will not help us. Jesus loves us and he cares so much about us and he wants us to really be aligned with what he wants us to align with. Because many times we tend to really go astray. But he's seeking all the time to bring us back on the right route. Hallelujah. So Paul wrote to the people of Colossae in Colossians chapter 3. And that's where my focus will be this morning. He began by saying that since then you have been raised with Christ. Now, if we died for, with him, we shall also be raised with him. So, since then you have been raised with Christ. If you have not been raised with Christ, you are not a Christian. So, if you have been raised with Christ, again, I want us to pay attention. Because he's drawing our attention to something. Because we are a new creation. We have a new life. We have a new self. And that's what Paul is dwelling on and trying to remind Christians that we are new. We are new people. And new people do new things. And our, our life or the newness of our lives is peculiar. It's not like you went to the store and bought a new thing. We, are been, we have been made new by him at a price. Hallelujah. At a cost that he paid because we couldn't pay. And it's really expensive. Hallelujah. So since then you have been raised with Christ. You cannot set your minds on what you want. Or your hearts on what you want. We have to set, because look, you belong to him. If you belong to him, then your mind must be set on him. Your heart must be set on him. And he says that set your heart and on things. Because he's not seated here. He's seated there. Let your will be done on as it is in we pull character from heaven onto earth. Hallelujah. We live our lives as if we are there. So our minds are not set on here, but over there. So he says, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Hmm. Set your minds on things above. Because you don't belong here, not on earthly things, but on, I said on, how would you know things above? How do we know things above? We know things above by knowing who is above. If you know who is above, you will begin to look at him and do things for him. Not things that you want to gain for yourself. Because remember, you are not you anymore. Hallelujah. You are not you. I am not me anymore. And therefore, the life I live, I don't live for me. I have to live for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he went on, go to the next verse. He went on to say, for you did what? And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So, you see, 
You are here, but you are not here. You are with Christ, and Christ is hidden in God. So you can't live, that's why he says, you can't live an earthly life. You are here, but you don't live your life like you are here. Hallelujah. Hmm. If you are dead, if you believe that who you were died, then you can't live that life anymore. Amen. So, reflection. I want everyone to begin to reflect and begin to think about who you are. In 30 seconds, I want you to bow your head down and ask yourself, who am I? And as you ask yourself, ask yourself, who do I live for? For myself or for Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe you have an answer. So you can run with me now. If you saw, who did you see yourself to be? It's important. Because the journey that we are going this morning, you will really flow with it when you know who you are. Amen. So it's important we understand that part. Who are you? Are you dead? Are you living your, Christ, uh, your life in Christ or are you living for yourself? What are you focused on? Are you focused on the here and now or you are focused on things above? These are things that you need to begin to reflect on consistently. Hallelujah. Let's move straight to verse 9. Because if you read in the middle there, he's telling you about things you don't have to do and all that. But then he comes to uh, verse 9 and 10, and he says, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with what? With what? All right, okay. Can you ask yourself whether the old self has been taken off. Or, or we took off the old self but left the practices. Who are you? Did you take off the old self with its practices or you took off the old self and left the practices? Hallelujah. And then, check yourself. Have you put on the new self? And that new self, Bible says that it's being renewed in knowledge in the, not in the image of Vogue. Not in the image of what is trending. Not in the image of your superstar. Not in the image of your hero. I don't actually know who your hero is. But if it's, your, if it's Christ, then that's fine. But I don't want you to really <laughs> live your life, your new life, in the image of your pastor. Hallelujah. Live your life in the image of your creator. <laughs> Do you want me to continue? All right, okay. If you want to highlight, then highlight the new self as well. 
Because I'm going to tell you something. And I've put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Hmm. Who created the new life? Have you ever seen God? No one has seen God. But by faith, we serve him. But we have seen Jesus. And God is asking us, that new man, go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10. I just want to show you something. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your, from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created, created. In our new creation we are created in Christ Jesus. So if we are going to now move on to where we were. Hallelujah. So here you see that in the image. So listen to me. We are supposed to live. It is Christ you have seen. Walked on this earth. So you are to walk in the image of Christ. Hallelujah. So we are our new life. Remember. We were all created in the image of God. Hallelujah. But then remember that we sin and we have been made new. Hallelujah. So you are a new person. I'm a new person. And that new person is created in the image of Christ. So we ought to begin to live in the image of him. Hallelujah. Now, that new self, that new man, because of time, what I'm going to do is that new man must begin to do something. Let's go to verse 12, from 12 to um, 17. It says that, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy. You can't take holiness out of the equation of the new life. It's impossible. Holiness is at the center of it. I said holiness is at the center of it. And he says that, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And we're going to really take, walk through this uh, very soon, so uh, because they, these are the fruit of the spirit, amen. amen. It's the character of a new person, of the new life. Hallelujah! If you are a new person in Christ, this is your character, it must reflect in your life. And that's a question you need to ask yourself is it reflecting in my life, or I am really in tune with the old works and old life? Because he says that. You put away the old practices, remember. Oh, hallelujah. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord. You see, now we are not doing things as we want, but as God wants and as God did it. As Christ did it, so shall we do. Because we are living a new life in the image of the creator. Hallelujah. We are not, listen, Christians must rise up. We are not living our lives like everybody lives their lives. We are living our life. You see, when somebody says he's a Christian, there is, there is so much responsibility attached. And unfortunately, do you know that we don't even know? We think... Even coming to church is a problem for us. Even coming to church. Hallelujah. Staying in church 
is an abomination. We want, to stay, we want to be in church for one hour. Maximum. Hallelujah. But. <laughs> Do you know you had an old life? In your old life. Let me ask you one question. Don't feel shy. I said, don't do what? Okay. Be bold and then you don't have to raise your hand. Just laugh or something. Then I know that indeed. Amen. Amen. You have an old life. Okay. Was, was, let me see. Okay. Let me use this one. (laughs) Was going to the nightclub part of your old life? Yes or no? Laugh. Do something. Okay, right, so some people understand what I'm talking about. If you understand that and if you did that, how long did you stay there? Somebody says all night. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, right. If If you go at 10 p.m., when do you leave? Okay, all right, that's fine. Can you tell me, can you calculate the time for me? Just five, uh, 10 in the, at night to 5 in the morning. How many hours? Seven. Hours. Seven. All right, okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. That, that's seven, good. Did you ever complain? Oh, you don't even want to go home. All right, okay. Did you ever look at your time when you were in the nightclub? Some people even don't take watch there because they, they're afraid somebody will pull it out. Yeah. You go to places that thieves are. Okay, right. And you could stay there all night. For seven hours you are there. Okay. And some do more than seven hours. Okay. All right. Good. How long do you stay in church? How long does, do you stay in church? And you are complaining. And you are complaining. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to live your life like the world live its life. You have to live your life like Christ did. What it means is that you have to really love to be in his presence. So you can learn from him and follow him. We haven't understood what we are doing. We call ourselves names, but we haven't understood what we are doing. I want us to understand what we are doing. Because this new life comes with a new lifestyle. The new life, I said, comes with what? A new lifestyle. We can't live the old lifestyle in this new uh, dispensation, in this new place that we are. We are no longer in the old. We are now in the new. Hallelujah. So we have to even forgive just like Christ did. Forgive us. Amen. Amen. Go to the next one. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Love. 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 This kind of love is demonstrated by Christ in a very special way. And in, in, uh, in the Bible, he said that, the, uh, Paul said, He demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's how he demonstrated this love. He did not wait for us to be perfect. He did not wait for us to be clean. He died for us so he can clean us. 
He died for us so he can pick us from the miry clay and wash us. He died for us so he can pick us from the dark place and bring us into his marvelous light. He died for us so we can put off the old self and put on the new man. He did not wait for us to put on a new man. So Jesus said that I did not come for the righteous, but I came for the lost. Hallelujah. And when he comes for the lost, the lost are now found. They can't live their life like they are lost any longer. If the lost is found, he's no longer lost, but found. And the one that is found lives a different life from the one that is lost. So when you come to church, you can't live the life that you used to live in the world. That's why the Bible says, put off the old practices. That's what we do. We don't come to church and still continually live the old life. Hallelujah. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. You were called to... <laughs> Maybe you haven't understood where I'm going. I said you were called to... Who is peace? Christ himself is the prince of peace. So you were called to the prince of peace. So you were called to Christ himself. Hallelujah. We've been called to him and therefore he says we have to be thankful. We have to be thankful. I said we have to be thankful. And this morning my theme Is the next verse, 17. And whatever, I said, whatever, whatever, <laughs> I, 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 I think Paul really wants us to understand something. Do you know that There are times we say things, but we don't do them. But Paul is saying that you can't separate your words from your deeds. As someone who has been called into the new who has put off the old self and has put on the new self, must do everything, whether in word or in deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. My thing for this morning is doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I have a question for you. Because it will help you if you can answer this question well. If you are to do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, my question is, can you say for sure that Jesus or everything you are doing, you are doing in the name of Jesus Christ? Everything. And he didn't say some things. He says everything. He says do it all. Not do some. Do it all. Do it what? 
And are we doing it all? Is everything we do, do we check whether he approves? Oh, so every morning, whatever I want to do, I have to go, Jesus, do I approve this? Of course, yes. Oh, so when I'm even taking my step, do I have to check whether uh, he approves it? Hallelujah. Let me say this to you. If we are for him, and if we have put on the new self, remember, the Bible says that we are with him in God. So we are not separated from him. And understand that we, as in we, have denied the self. So the old self that is us is gone. Amen. Amen. And if the old life that is us is gone, then it means that we have put on the new man, the new self, which is created in the image of, I mean, which is, uh, which, which really manifests itself in the image of its creator. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. If that is so, then you and I must understand this morning that whatever we are doing, his spirit which, who is in us is leading us. I don't know if you get in there. I said the spirit of God who is in us is now leading the way. Can you go back to Galatians 2.20? I just want people to understand it well. Hallelujah. I want you to understand it well because it looks like some of us are not getting it. Listen, this is you. This is your new man. We are looking at what Paul said, which really must reflect in our lives as well. So this is the new man. He says, I have been, cru the old man, this, look at this. He's transitioning from the old man to the new man. And he says that, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer, when you were crucified with Christ, what happened? What happened? You died. Okay. So, you no longer live. So, Felix, come, 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 come. Felix doesn't live as Felix anymore. Unless he's not in Christ. If he is in Christ, Felix is not living anymore. Just like Paul said. When Paul was living as Paul, he was persecuting the church. When Paul was crucified with Christ, hallelujah, and he no longer lives and put on the new man, he was no longer persecuting the Christ, but he was promoting, he was doing what? He was promoting the church. The person who was persecuting uh, uh, um, Christ himself and his church is now promoting Christ himself and his church. So the old man was persecuting Christ. The new man is promoting Christ. That is how it works. And the Bible says that, so he no longer lives, but Christ lives inside of him. The life I now live in the body, in this body, I live by faith, not by physical works. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am at, you see, you've been transitioning from, from this life to a life of faith. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says that without no one, I said no one. So if you want to please God, it's not by your life that you live in the physical. It is by the life that you live in faith. And the life that you live in faith is so fantastic. It's so nice. Let me tell you why. You don't have money, but by faith you have money. Beloved in the Lord, 
Will I eat faith? Yes, of course, faith is your currency. You need to understand for the believer, faith is a currency. Because for the, you see, because I don't see it, but I believe it. And I don't see it, but I'm not sad. Because I know my Redeemer. There are people, their Redeemer is dead. If your Redeemer is dead, it means you are dead. Who will redeem you? If the one to redeem you is dead, who will redeem you? So me, my Redeemer is alive. Beloved, there are certain songs we have stopped singing them. We have stopped. And we sing things that have no meaning. Even the dance that goes through the song itself makes me just not like it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So this man must understand that the Bible says in Colossians 3.17, He says that this man, whatever he does, whatever you do, whatever I do, whether in what I say or in what I really do, that is in my deeds, they must align. They must have a relationship to one another. You can't say one thing and do another thing. Amen? Amen. So, what I, whatever I do in word or deed, I have to do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, my question is that, are we doing the things we do in the name of Jesus? What does this all mean? When I go to work, I have to work as unto him. Now, is what you are doing pleasing to him? Are you sure you are doing it in his name? If I want to speak, I need to make sure he's pleased with what I say. I can't speak like that. I can't just open my mouth and say anything. It is important to understand that Christians cannot say anything anyhow. Because the new man is, if we read from 12, you realize what the new man is doing. The new man is having a new life. Being lived in a new way. And you cannot continue to do the old things. Because the old things are not done in him. So ask yourself this morning, the things I do, is Christ pleased? Is he? The things I do, is Christ pleased with them? Oh, pastor would not be happy with it, so I wouldn't let pastor see. The new life is not laid for pastor. It's laid for Christ. You see, let me tell you something. This is what makes Christianity interesting. This is what makes the New Testament interesting. You see, in the Old Testament, do not touch. They've written step by step, and they had so many laws. In the new life, it's what Christ did. So he says everything. Unlimited. Everything you do. Everything. Everything means everything. So, it is not like the old that you have, okay, do not do A, then you, okay, I'm not doing A. Do not do B, 
Therefore, I'm not doing B. Hallelujah. So when the rich young ruler came to Jesus, he had really done so well in checking out the lists. So when Jesus said, he said, how can I inherit it? And this is what you need to understand. You can't inherit the kingdom of God when you have, you have checked the list. So he came. How can I inherit it? He said, okay, go do it. Oh, yeah. I have done them all. He has a checklist. Tithe, paid. Offering, paid. Going to the temple, check. Growing beard, check. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, they used to grow beard. So growing beard, check. Okay. Um, praying, check. Giving alms, check. Because it was part of the old system. You need to give alms. Amen. Not sleeping with somebody's wife. Check. Everything checked. Jesus said, disciples, clap for this man. This is the old. Now let's come to the new. So Jesus looked at him and he said, you've done very well. Yeah. This is a good guy. But there's one thing left. I'm not looking at the list that you have in your hands. I go beyond that. Now I'm looking at this. And I can see an idol in your heart. And you need to get rid of that idol. And that idol, Jesus calls Mammon. So Jesus said, remember, remember, he had said that life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. Hallelujah. So, young man, go, sell everything you have. Don't go and put the money in the bank. Give it to the poor. You see, people think they are wise. So they'll go and sell and put it in the bank and say, okay, I've sold everything, I've come. No. In Christianity, when Christ asks you to leave one thing, he asks you to do something else. You, you don't leave. Em- you see, listen to me carefully. In the spiritual realm, you don't leave places empty. So Jesus said that if, a, if, a, if an evil spirit leaves you, it goes to Rome. But it will come back and check whether the place is empty. Because you don't leave places empty in the spirit realm. You need to fill them. So when the demon leaves, you need to fill it with something else. Fill it with Christ. Fill it with something and Let the spirit of God live there. Hallelujah. So he said, when you go and sell, don't keep the money in the bank. Give it to the poor and now come and follow me. He looked at Jesus and suddenly the happiest man on earth who have had access to Jesus and could talk to Jesus one-on-one in the presence of Jesus started feeling sad. He started feeling sad. He left. Why? Amen. Amen. Jesus, all my life, you have blessed me with so much money. Are you speaking English or (laughs) Chief? What are you saying? I should do what? 
Everything. Everything. Are you sure you said everything? Jesus, you don't understand. How can I support your ministry when I sell everything and give to the poor? Don't you know that you need money for ministry? You said I should come and follow you. You. You don't even have. I am the one who has the money to support your ministry. What are you saying? Go sell everything. Is that not what we tell people today? God bless them so they can support the ministry. Not God support the ministry. Bless who? Hallelujah. Now, this man is sad. But I thought he said he loved Jesus. I thought he said he wanted to go to heaven. What has all that plan gone to? Because someone who came to Jesus, he's been living right and wanted to know how he can even do it better. Now he came and messed up everything. Jesus, what are you saying? Now, beloved, where am I going? The things that we are counting as showing that we have the favor of God do not count at all. Do you know that today the blessing of God has been monetized? So it is how much you have that shows how much blessed you are. So we don't do everything in his name any longer. We do everything in the name of cash. So I will not do the things that I have to do for Christ because I will not be able to do the thing that will get me money. So we are no longer focused on what pleases the Lord, but we are focused on what can get us money. Very dangerous. Beloved in the Lord, some even feel and believe that righteousness today is for financial gain. Because if you live righteous, have we not been told that if you live righteous, if you live for Christ, then Christ will bless you and you will be rich. It's all you will be, go- you will be going to heaven. So if the people begin to live that life and there's no money coming, then the Bible is a lie. But what does the Bible say? In 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 5, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness, Bible says that they've been robbed of the truth. I said people have been robbed of the truth in today's church. It is no longer everything that you do in his name. But if you live right and you walk according to some way that it is being preached, you will be rich. You will be financially blessed. Listen, your, your, your way to, the, to heaven does not depend on how much money you have. Because we don't pay our way to heaven. You know, the problem with us is that we no longer do everything in the name of the Lord. Everything has changed about us. We don't know Christians any longer. Who is a Christian? We don't even know anymore. Christians are mixed up with everything. 
And instead of us doing, now the question is that what you are doing, if Jesus was around, will he do the same? If he won't do it, stop it. Yeah, but if I don't do it, how will I eat? Don't eat fast. Don't eat fast. If Jesus wouldn't do it, don't do it. I said, if Jesus wouldn't do it, don't do it. Because everything that we do must be done in his name. Whether it's secretly, the things we do in secret must be done in his name. The things we do in public must be done in his name. Now, can you confess that everything you're doing in secret is being done in his name? When there is no one around, hallelujah, 